Coming up on First at Four, with so many restrictions and places closing down during the pandemic, there are still places to go and enjoy yourself during the 4th of July holiday weekend. And the Challenger Learning Center in Hazard resumes in-person camps. And the hot and humid conditions return as we head into the end of the week and into the weekend. First at Four is next. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, there will be increased traffic to get to some Kentucky lakes this weekend. Lake Cumberland is expected to be one of the busy places because of other places that are closed. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more from Pulaski County. During a pandemic, it's a time when a lot of people are telling you you simply can't. But Lake Cumberland is a place where people say you can. Marinas and boat ramps are seeing more people, especially with vacation destinations either shutting down or having numerous restrictions because of COVID-19. Joe Newell and her family had an Alaskan cruise canceled, then ran into problems trying to book a vacation on the beach. They said they found the perfect solution in a houseboat. With everything that's happening, we've been pretty much isolated at home, just our family. So we felt very comfortable about coming out here because we are just with our family. There are cases of the coronavirus increasing here locally, but a spokesperson at the local health department says they really can't tie those cases to outbreaks of large groups that are gathered here on Lake Cumberland. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Lee's Ford owner J.D. Hamilton says their business has been so good they have had to hire additional help for the summer. Meanwhile, several towns will still have a fireworks display. We have a list of those now in our area on WIMT.com. Yesterday, the U.S. reported nearly 45,000 new cases of COVID-19. This is the second highest total since the pandemic began. Almost half of those numbers came from three states. Texas, Florida, and California. Testifying at a Senate hearing, Dr. Anthony Fauci warned it could get much worse if action is not taken. He expects the U.S. could reach 100,000 cases each day. Health experts say following guidelines do work. We know what works. We got to get everybody to wear masks. Um, we've got to really think about indoor gatherings and whether we can afford them. I think largely we can't. No bars, uh, no nightclubs, no gyms. Coronavirus cases in the U.S. have reached nearly 2.7 million cases. The death toll has topped 127,000 Americans. Back here in Kentucky, we are still waiting for today's updated numbers from the governor's office. Despite the global pandemic, many organizations are continuing summer camps just in a different capacity. One of those in hazard is the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky. WYMT's Tommy Poole was there today. The doors behind me at the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky are opened once again as the center is back to hosting summer day camps one day a week all throughout the month of July. On Wednesday, campers returned to the classroom building with Legos. Of course, with COVID-19, the camp had to make some adjustments, but the center is just happy to have eager children back ready to learn. I feel that it's super important. It helps them get back into the socialization process right before school starts back, and I'm sure these kids, especially this one, uh, is really important because they've been out of school now for what, four months almost. Now campers have their own kits of supplies so they don't have to share materials. In addition to that, hand sanitizer, masks, and gloves are even available for the camper safety as well. In Hazard, Tommy Poole, WYMT, Mountain News. Officials at the Challenger Center say the changes they have made might be the way the center can reach students once they do return to the classroom, just another way they may have to possibly adapt. And a few 
showers and thunderstorms are continuing to push through the mountains. Not too bad out there, but could be soggy in some spots. We'll take you up, though, to radar first, where you can see some of those showers and storms pushing through the mountains. Now, they're starting to die down in some areas, and when I say that, it was pretty heavy rain that moved through parts of Breathitt County. Started to die down, though, as it moved into parts of Wolf and Lee County, but still seeing some heavier showers down into parts of Harlan, now moving into Bell County. So if you are in the city of Pineville, about to get hit with some heavy rain and even a few scattered showers and thunderstorms in the southern portion of Leslie and Clay County, a little bit moving into Knox County. And there's some heavier downpours, but nothing too bad. And those thunderstorms aren't too bad. And maybe some little bit of lightning in some of them. So depending on if you are getting rain or not, you could be in the 70s, 80s, or if you're like Prestonsburg and Huntington up there where they have been dry throughout the day, close to the upper 80s. So seeing a wide range of temperatures with some of those showers that are pushing through the mountains. Those dew points though, pretty sticky. You're into that uncomfortable to instant sweat category with those dew points in the upper 60s to lower 70s. So pretty humid out there. And we're going to continue to see those hot and humid conditions heading into the next several days. We'll start to dry out though heading into your Thursday. Plenty of sunshines in store for the next several days. And we are going to see pretty hot temperatures return for that 4th of July weekend. I'll have a look at that weekend forecast coming up in a little bit. All right. Thank you, Paige. A man is behind bars in Laurel County on child pornography charges after an undercover investigation by Kentucky State Police. Police arrested 25-year-old Andrew Grigsby yesterday in London. The electronic crime branch of KSB began investigating Grigsby after police say he uploaded images of child porn online. Police seized equipment used in the crime and took the items to a forensic lab. Grigsby is facing 12 counts of possession of child pornography. A Floyd County school is breaking new ground with allowing its students in control of their educational future with the new Floyd County School of Innovation. WYMT's Lacey Roberts is in Martin with more. Now this program will allow students to earn their high school education while choosing an emphasis in that career field, but only 100 slots are available. The three full pathways that are available are pre-engineering, computer science, and heavy equipment. In the works is a full healthcare pathway, although currently certification courses are available. A student's day is split between their regular high school and Floyd County School of Innovation. They will focus on students demonstrating what they learn as they also sharpen their communication, collaboration, and problem-solving skills. We want this to be about the school and the kids, but also our community, because this school is not going to survive without our community. And so we want our community businesses to partner with us and say, if you've got a problem, well, what's your problem? Tell us what your problem is and let our kids, our innovative kids in this county, try to fix your problem. Now, the extra part to this is that these are abilities that employers are looking for in future employees, and they will have the opportunity to leave this program with industry certifications and so much more. But for now, in Martin, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. This program is for grades 9 through 12. We'll have more on what schools are involved coming up at 530. Across the Commonwealth, summer basketball has been up in the air, but today Kentucky Premier East still had a girls basketball camp at the Letcher County Recreation Center. About 20 Kentucky Premier players ranging from second to fourth grade learned from a familiar face. Former Kentucky Point Guard Michaela Epps helped out with the camp. She says she's happy to give back to the future of women's basketball. Just giving, giving back and pouring myself into the youth. Uh, I wish I would have had somebody like me when I was their age. And so now I'm, them, uh, I'm that for them. And so, of course, Kentucky Premier, I, was, uh, I actually had some individual workouts scheduled today in Marion County that I canceled and rescheduled just so I can come up here because I told them, you know, I can get my local kids anytime, but getting, you know, the Mountain kids, the Eastern KY kids, very few far in between. And so, again, I'm very grateful to be here today. WYMT's Camille Gear will have more on Epps Impact and the camp tonight at 6. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Wednesday afternoon. The Dow closes down today more than 77 points. The Trump administration is pushing back against reports the president knew about an allegation Russia was using the Taliban to target American soldiers. President Trump is questioning the report that Russia offered bounties to to the Taliban to kill American soldiers. The president says he was never briefed and called the reports fake news. 
think what the president is saying about a hoax is that he was somehow briefed on it and didn't take action, looked the other way. Sources confirmed to CBS News the information was in the president's written classified daily briefing, but the president was not verbally briefed. The Christopher Columbus statue at the Columbus, Ohio City Hall is gone. Crews and a crane arrived last night for the removal process on the South Plaza of the building in downtown Columbus. Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther ordered that statue removed as soon as possible back on June 18th. The Columbus Arts Commission voted to approve the removal of the statue a few days later. The mayor tasked the commission to launch a community drive process to find a new statue that embraces diversity. Straight ahead on First at Four, what will school look like in the fall? Experts are weighing in on that. And we're going to continue to see more sunshine heading into the next several days with some drier weather. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up.